Hi guys, Matt Collins here from Beausoleil. In this video I'm going to talk to you about PVA. What I want to show you is the full range of PVA options that are out there, when to use them and why you should use them. First, let's start with a good old-fashioned stringer. So here's a simple loop of PVA strings about two inches long that I've just tied a couple of overhand knots in the, uh, in the bottom and all we need to do Take a couple of baits and a baiting needle, loop it on, thread the baits down and that knot will hold those in place. Next we simply loop the PVA loop onto the hook there and that's ready to be cast out. Simple string of presentations such as this are great when you first start on the water and just want to get a, a little bit of extra uh, scent and smell in the water but uh, you want something more than a single. Stringers can be as long as you like, you can do them seven or eight baits long. They will obviously limit casting distance. You can also cut the baits in half and make a string of, uh, a string of halves as well, that's another option. Simple PVA stringers like this are a great option for when fishing open water marks, presenting onto hard gravel spots or onto, uh, onto firm silt. I wouldn't use them when fishing in weed. Another feature of PVA stringers is that the PVA melts only when it's exposed to water. PVA that's trapped inside a bait will be unlikely to melt. In this instance I've left a gap between the uh, group of uh, four cut baits here and that will melt creating two groups of two halves of bait. The other advantage of cutting your baits in half like this is that the uh, smells that are uh, locked inside the boilie will escape quicker and pull the carp in a little bit faster. The next PVI option I want to talk to you about are solid bags. Now solid bags are an underused technique but they are very 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 useful indeed. If you're trying to present a bait at extreme range and uh, you know, tangle free guaranteed presentation they are the one. They're also brilliant in weed and any situation where you're not entirely sure what exactly you're going to be fishing over. Solid PVA bags are a great way of getting uh, a powerful a uh, small amount of bait out in a very very tight spot. You can put liquids in there, oils in there, crumb, pellets, all perfect choices. To start with, just using your fingers, hold the PVA bag open like that and lower the bait inside it. Next what you want to do is manipulate the hook into the bottom of the middle of the bag and then simply nick the point of the hook through the bottom of the PVA bag like that. Turn the bag over and then holding the bag open you're ready for some mix. Here I'm using some pellets and some boilie crumb, some half baits in there and we just put a third of the bag in, a little bit more like that. And we need to stop there and then take the lead, fold the hook lick in and drop the lead into the bag. With the lead in the bag like that, add some crumb and it's important to make sure that the hook link is not wrapped around the lead. So just start pressing that crumb around the lead and continue filling like that. With the bag about two thirds full like this, we can start making the solid bag. Now you want to twist it really nice and tight. Start squeezing the bag and continue to twist like that. Do not let go of that because we need to put some PVA tape around it. 
This 5mm quick, quick melt tape is perfect for this job. Pull off about 5 inches, 4 inches, something like that, and wrap around that twist four times. It's not easy to break with your hands and it's got a good amount of elasticity in it. Then you've got two ends like this and then we just need to do some overhand knots. A couple of simple overhand knots, two, three, something like that. So now the bag looks like that. Now what we need to do is make that bag into an aerodynamic shape. To fold the corners in, simply lick the bag, pinch the corner and fold it in like that. Hold that in place. Squeeze those contents, lick the bag and fold that over again. And by the time you've done the second one, the first one should have set. If you've got a bit sticking up, then just lick it again. Squeeze that flat. And then we manipulate the bag to get it nice and, uh, nice and round. Like that. Once you're happy with the bottom of the bag, we can trim off the excess. So there we go, very simple PVA bag, pellet, crumb, and I'd already pre-soaked that crumb with some uh, oils and stuff as well. Could have added extra oil in there, and uh, that will cast a long way, great for weed, and you're always gonna have a, a, a properly presented bait. Now you notice at the start that I put the uh, hook through the bottom of the bag, and there's a very good reason for this. I use hand sharpened hooks, and uh, now I'd like to put, to put some Vaseline on that hook before I'd fish with it and then rather than tuck it back inside the bag I just take a, a piece of uh, PVA off cut here lick that off cut and then stick it over that hook with this second layer of PVA over the hook the hook can't possibly hook up on any weed etc on the cast and it, uh, it's outside the PVA bag, so it won't tangle on a piece of crumb or get blunt on a, uh, uh, on, on a piece of pallet. So PVA bags, phenomenally useful baiting strategy option. The next PVA option I want to show you is the parachute bag. Now the parachute bag is basically a solid PVA bag, but the lead is fished outside the bag. Parachute bags are an excellent choice when fishing over light weed, especially when you don't have to cast very far. They're also a good option for floating down onto, uh, uh, onto very soft silt because they'll land the lead very gently. They're a good option for use in a bait boat or dropping from a rowing boat. So let's have a look at tying a parachute bag now. So to start, hold the bag open, lower our bait in, maneuver the hook into the middle of the bottom of the PVA bag and then simply nick the point of the hook out of the bottom of the bag. Like that. I'm going to take some of our mix. That's the same micro pellet and boily crumb mix. Next, you need to carefully pull that hook link straight. Then with your lead in your uh, left hand, start to form that twist. And we take some 5mm PVA tape. So we've got our two strands there, then we just need to do some overhand knots. Even though this is a parachute bag, I still want it to be aerodynamic to make it easy to cast. Cut the excess PVA strands like that. So there we go, that's what a parachute bag set up correctly tied should look like. It won't cast anywhere near as far as a PVA bag. That, I wouldn't try and cast that more than about 50 yards. The last PVA option I want to talk to you about is the PVA stick. So this is my mix. It's very simple. We've got a range of different pellets in there. 
all the all small sizes, some half baits as well, and I've pre-soaked the entire mix in a mix of uh, oyster sauce and fish sauce, just the sort of thing you buy from the Asian food store, and some hemp oil as well. And that's been sitting absorbing those, uh, those flavours ever since the start of the session. All we're going to do now is crush those up. So we'll take some of our mix, put it into the old crusher here, give that a proper grind, and out onto the bait lid. Now the quarter crusher is a brilliant tool, but I do find that uh, mix sticks in it somewhat. Next, just going to uh, push some of the mix into the uh, PVA. This is the, the boily, boily web system. Give it a real good squeeze and then extrude that out. Overhand loop, and if you hold the knot there, you can just pull that like that, and it keeps the knot tight to the stick. Another overhand loop, and you want a gap between those knots, just pinch it there, and that'll, uh, that'll be exactly what you want. So by doing the two knots like this, I can just simply cut through between them, that gives me a stick, and that resets the PVA system, ready for the next stick. So that as it is, is a very attractive little stick, it's got uh, flavour and oils and the pellet and the crumb in there, and some oil of course, but uh, in order to make it even more attractive, I'm going to put it in some, uh, in some dip. Now in this pot, I've got some uh, fish sauce, just the uh, stuff you get in the supermarket. But there are a couple of options for attaching this stick. You could thread it down the entire hook link, and that'd be a good option if I wanted to chuck this a very long way. Personally, if I wanted to put a PVA bag a very long way, I'd just use a solid PVA bag, because I'd be guaranteed a presentation. Here I'm only fishing about 60 yards, so I'm just going to nick that on. After I've nicked it on, I can put a little bit of Vaseline on that hand sharpened hook, and uh, basically that is ready to cast out. So those little uh, nicked on PVA sticks are working really well for me this week. I've had a bite a night, uh, two carp over 30, best has been 35 pounds, so it's, it's definitely working. and. Um, but what I've been doing is I've been fishing them away from bait. So I've been applying, creating a bed of bait and then fishing the PVA stick off that, away from that bait. And uh, it's been taken quite readily. So why am I using this stick instead of any of the other options that I've talked about? Well, I want to present a bait that, uh, you know, between 40 and 60 yards. So casting isn't, isn't a big issue. Um, so I don't have to use something like a solid PVA bag. I'm wanting to present the bait not on the hard patches, I'm looking for the kind of the, the, the silt, but not the really soft silt. So there we go, that's four different ways to use PVA. All have their strengths, all have their weaknesses. The trick is knowing what PVA option to use in which situation. Here I am on the island playing an ice common carp. I'd seen some fish movement here a little earlier and decided to try and stalk one out. I was looking for a quick bite so went with a small PVA stick. Within 40 minutes the rob was away and I was playing this lovely carp. PVA sticks are a great choice when you're looking for a quick bite just like this. I hope you found these tips of use. All the best with your fishing. Cheers.